everybody, good morning, this is Jean here, uh, Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for You. I'm working on my black and white and colored quilt, uh, my fractured Dresden plate quilt. Um, but first I wanted to address something. Um, a few days ago, on December 25th, was uh, Christmas Day for most of you. As you know, I don't celebrate, we, our family doesn't celebrate Christmas. So it was just another day. Um, I have to address, I had gone sort of for a, a walkabout down to the, the ongoing bridge work that we had had, and I had mentioned the flooding, and I, I looked rather miserable and sad, and I think it translated to my video, and I, and I know I don't have to, but I want to apologize for you who are, for you people who were celebrating your uh, special day, um, I didn't want to cast a cloud over it, like, oh, boo-hoo us with our flooding. Um, as you know, where our, the home we're living in, where we moved to, um, is now being subjected to literally 100-year floods um, every, every rainstorm, it seems. And that is not unusual. It is happening uh, everywhere. We are, we are finding out. We're listening to different stories of different disasters, really. Um, and I wanted to clear up, and I, I, or clear up, I should say, um, and I don't have to explain ourselves, but um, I don't, somebody had asked, somebody had said something about this move has not been good. As you know, we moved from our home, our, our, our home a year ago, to this lovely home, uh, which our son owns. Um, and it's been a wonderful move. The flooding, notwithstanding, it, the flooding stinks. It's, it's horrible. It's just horrible. Um, you see that water coming up, the creeks over flowing its banks, the bridge is not doing the job. That's nothing to do with our move here. It's been a very good move. We moved um, a, a year ago. In, in a month's time, it'll be a year we've lived here. We were settling in and then the pandemic hit. And I'm fairly transparent. And as I, I always say, I'm a one take gal. When I film whatever mood, is I'm filming it and that's it. I, I throw it up on the computer and I, I, I don't really edit things and it's what it is. And the, the last year has been very tough. Very tough. Oh my goodness. You know, that's an understatement. It's been extremely tough. Our move hasn't been, but this year has been for so many of us. And as I said, I'm quite, I think I'm quite transparent and, and I'm, I'm, I'm what you see is what you get. Um, but our move, we love living here. We absolutely, I'm, as again, I'm not trying to convince you. We just love living here. It's been awesome. We had trouble with our other house. Um, we had other problems. Like we have trees come down. <laughs> I grew up in the woods <laughs> and my husband's from London, but I grew up in the woods and I'm used to falling trees, you know, and the boys were out cutting the trees down and um, dangerous trees. Again, that's just, it seems like the world is crying. The earth is crying. Um, f rivers are overflowing. Trees are falling. Mountain, mountains, <laughs> volcanoes are erupting. There are mudslides and there are fires. Um, and we're not immune to that. We're not immune to that. So when I film um, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's really been a crummy year. It has been. It's very stressful. At times I've been miserable and crying and stressed out. Um, as you know, I've always tried um, to uh, count our blessings. We have, as somebody said, we have many hands to hold, which we do, not physically though. Um, we have a large family and we've been not fractured uh, because of the pandemic, but yes, almost. Um, we, we have a family photograph taken almost every year with our large family. We have 10 children and eight in-laws and 16 grandchildren and one of our grandchildren is married. The other one is going to be married. So we have about 38 in our immediate family and we need to take family photos. Well, that's not happening now. So that makes us sad. That makes us stressed and that makes us distanced. Um, but we do, we do have each other. Uh, my friend Jen, uh, our daughter, our daughter Malia, we are in contact with them and they came over the other day. She helped with Maxwell actually. Um, because he has a new neurologist down in Philadelphia and I can't do it. I, I was just too stressed and I said to Malia, absolutely. She's like, yeah, I'll take him down. He had a sleep EEG um, and then he had to have some blood work done. She had two different visits down in a temple university. So very, very kind. Our yeah. kids are, but it was funny because our other, our other son, Justin had come by um, 
we haven't seen him in a little while and he came by and having a nice chat. <laughs> he said, he's very pragmatic. He's like, well, mom and dad, you know, do you have a, do you have renter's insurance? And we're like, yeah, with flood. And because I have my large sewing room and my machines and everything, it's worth a little bit. And he said, and I have a special rider on that. We've made sure of that. And the home, our son and daughter-in-law have flood insurance for the home. And he, it's basically, we have things from when we moved from our other house, which do not fit in this home. This, um, this is a smaller home than our other house. Um, we have things in the basement, which has flooded. So he's like, well, we have things in big Rubbermaid containers. And he says, well, just put, he says, get them out of the basement. Like, why don't you just get, you know, sort of not get a storage shed, but like maybe just get a container or something out on your property and put everything in there. It's dry. Just get it out of the basement. Don't worry about it. And that's the, that's the attitude. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's, it's just stuff. We have each other and we, again, as I keep saying, we are counting our blessings because so many people have lost people, have lost loved ones. And, you know, we have to deal with water. And um, as I said, it, it's, it's happening more frequently, which is a bummer, which is stressful. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? We absolutely love it. We have deer that come and visit. I have no neighbors. I love that. It's quiet. Um, it's, it's peaceful. Um, Maxwell has a place that he can uh, explore. Um, they are enjoying cutting the wood, chopping the wood down, um, being in nature. And you know, that in itself is a massive blessing. So yeah, we are counting our blessings. Um, again, the flooding stinks. It, it's just terrible. And that made me very, very sad. But again, I just want to, I didn't want to throw a cloud over your lovely day. I know a lot of you um, were looking forward to your spending your holidays. And, um, and again, I apologize for that. I know I don't have to because you're all so lovely. But what I'm doing is I'm working on my quilt, which the video that's coming up, I had done this last week. Um, I'm working on it. So this is sort of like a part three of working on my Dresden plate quilt. It's coming along. I'm very, very pleased. Um, I do, uh, I'm filming part four of it, finishing it, and um, I'll put that up. But I just wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you for everything. We're very, very blessed. Um, we are keeping safe, and um, we just want to send our love to you and hope you're having a, a lovely end of year. We're looking forward to 2021. Um, whether it's going to be the beginning of the year or even to the middle of the year, any different, but our, our ment mental look outlook can be. Keep safe. Um, I have a few things. I actually might be doing a block, another block party. A lot of, quite a few people have said, oh, are you gonna do a block party? As you know, I did one in 2018 and 2019. Um, I did a 12 inch block party with 20 blocks and then I did a nine inch block party with what was it 42 blocks i'm thinking of doing a six inch <laughs> this big <laughs> and i i will see but quite a few people as i say have said oh you're going to do that so maybe that would be something that we can just all have something small little to look forward to if you look forward to my videos um but again i'm videoing what i video when i video it and this video to come is me working on this quilt so again i hope you are having a lovely um little holiday vacation if you have days off if you're not um please take care of yourselves and um yeah love from the true loves so again thanks a lot folks see ya bye good morning everybody this is jean here the last video i put up i'm working on my quilt that i have deconstructed from the original state that it was in um the last thing i did is upon suggestion i added the flying geese print my fake flying geese, somebody pointed out. <laughs> well, it's fine with me. They're gorgeous, rainbow colored flying geese. Now, I have put this on point, which means it's no longer, I'm no longer working with a square quilt. I have to fill in the four corners to make it square, having put that on point. So, um, my original, quilt had the quarter plates in the corner with a large swathe of black there if you remember but 
I always say, I'm stepping back, I always say, when you are looking at a quilt, or when I'm looking at a quilt, I sort of squint my eyes and I always think, what color does it read from a distance? And surprisingly, when I'm doing that through the viewfinder, I, I see white. I see a white quilt. Isn't that funny? Because it has every single color in the book. But having taken away, now I see white, having taken away this large black area with just the corners, which uh, initially the quilt read black, because I had this black here and I had all of this black here, um, I don't necessarily want a black quilt. So I'm looking at it and I'm seeing perhaps a white quilt. <laughs> as funny as that sounds, because as you can see, every single color in the book is in this quilt. So I'm going to, uh, it's completely square. Um, so I have a, a good reference point now to add on to. That was where I messed up initially my first quilt, which I had to cut this down. I was cutting out just willy-nilly, just these massive triangles. They were on the bias, they were all messed up. And then I just added this quarter plate in each corner, my original quilt. Um, and, and it was, uh, and it didn't, it didn't turn out, it was not square, it was all, it was seven inches too short. I had made it at a, not, at a stressful time in my life. So again, the purpose of deconstructing this quilt. So now I'm going to get my boys in here. I have this clamped up on my wall. I don't have a design wall. I just use these clamps temporarily. They're, um, they're, big, they're big clamps. Somebody said, what do you use to... They're just big clamps. Uh, plumbing. They're awesome. I just hit clamp it up on my shelf. Um, so I'm going to get my boys in here to help me try to figure out what to do with these massive four corners also incorporating my plates somehow so I'm going to go get my men now well I'm working on my quilt I have two helpers to help me here and the last video I put up was the quilt with the flying geese and putting it on making it a square which it is now perfectly square so on point which is like the diamond shape now I'm trying to figure out the corners. Now, looking at this through the lens, there's too much black. And Ian said that also. My, initial, my, my original quilt, the, the problem came with these corners. And as you can see, even though the, quilt, my, the main quilt is bigger now because I added the borders, it, they're still messed up. But looking at it, and as Ian said, there's too much, there's too much black. Now, your subscriber, though, what was the suggestion that she made that was really good? Well, no, I've already done that. I've yeah, already. But what did she say to do? She had said to add the flying geese, which is just that print there. Okay. It's brilliant. Right. It's just lovely. But, um, and then quite a few people were like, "Put the corners back on," but we've we've come to the conclusion. The corners are irregular, <laughs> so you're going to have to figure it out as you go. Right. But you need a band in here. Of? Perhaps this. Is that your the, suggestion? I thought, well here, here, let me just show you. Can you just, Maxwell, you just do that. I have this, bl I have the black and white spot. Now, we're, we're looking at it. I don't have a design wall. I have design men. <laughs> I have design boys. Maxwell, you don't want to be seen? <laughs> no, Maxwell, come on. Do it. Yeah. See, I like not that much, not that big. That's it. So, about how, about f f five inches? Well, whatever half of this strip that you've got, because you can always cut it off, but you can't add to it once you square your So, corners. look at that. Look how much better. Again, I'm looking at through the, I'm looking at through the, the, the lens here. That is so much better. It, it brings so much more relief. And I figured out I don't have enough black to fill that hole in, but I don't like that. I don't like that. So maybe I have, I maybe, I'm looking at it, maybe I have, I can put the white and then another band of flying geese. Maybe what you need is more input 
from uh, these clever subscribers uh, who watch your videos. Yeah, but they're looking at me and saying, what the heck are you doing? Because <laughs> I just sliced the dices. I think I I'm looking at this. I think, the, I think, because I have it, I think I it's, uh, okay, hold on, Maxwell. I think a, um, another flying geese right here. So I have the flying yeah. geese, the white, the flying geese, and then I can, I can, because I have that fabric, I can mess with the corners then. And it, and it, it the core, the, there's not, black doesn't, isn't the predominant color. Yeah, I love it. This is so brilliant. I love what's here. This is fabulous. I like that too. The flying geese and the, the so I think circles. yeah I think another thing of I the think sunshine. the white I think I think I think the white and I think a, another band of flying geese print right. and then the corners okay all right Maxwell you okay <laughs> all right thank you very much you guys so as you can see I have cut in the, my previous video I had cut these corners I had cut this corner of my quilt, just slice them off. So I have these two corners here. I have these two corners here, which are like large triangles that I'm gonna be working with. But I have this lot here. Um, if you remember my last video, I just sort of sliced this off. <laughs> so many people were having a heart attack watching me slice, slice and dice. Again, I don't do things perfectly. Um, but this is, this is all attached. So I have to cut off this border here. Now, a lot of people were like, oh, if, you know, it, it wasn't perfect, so what? Well, look at that. Look how imperfect this was. I just added a piece here to make my, to start making my quilt a little bit bigger um, and square. But look how, un, look how not square it is. I mean, it's like this, this line up, up here and look, look at this. It's oh, just on this bit, it's about an inch and a half on not square. So... What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut off this border. Now, I see that I only have about, about two inches there. I'm just going to slice that off within a quarter of an inch. Um, so if I do use, somehow, perhaps, use this border, I don't know, um, I probably won't. But I'm just going to cut that off, and a lot of people are, I did say, I did say hold your breath because <laughs> I'm not using a ruler. <laughs> But here we go, there is, there is another triangle that I can somehow work with. I'm preserving this. This is the most important part. Oh, I had said in the beginning, I had completely forgot that I have to finish this. I did finish that. There's a satin stitch, but I don't like that. I'll probably put, a, I'll, I'll probably put the white there to finish it off in the corner since I've now sort of deemed it that the, uh, this is gonna be a, more of a white quilt than a black quilt. Now, I had had um, the, this small black and white dot, it's a small black and white dot. I don't have that. I, I didn't have it. I can't find it. Uh, no, I don't know where it is. I, I think I used it all. I have a larger black and white dot, which is fine, which is fine to me. This is, this is going to be a bit more prominent. So I'm going to use that. That doesn't bother me in the least. I'm going to continue cutting off this, this border, which took me ages to do. If you can imagine, I cut out all of these circles. Now look at this. I, I will, I will. At the, when I put this on a corner, I will have to add another bit of black here um, because look how tiny that is. <laughs> like I said, this look look at this. This is so not right. But I will I'll preserve this bit and then worry about that bit. Um, yeah, this this border here took me quite a while to make because I had to cut out all of these half circles and then I sat and stitched. I sat and stitched them on. This is a um, delightful fabric. I did. I think I showed you the last video. This was the fabric I had gotten, and as you can see, for these half circles, which which has this print, I just cut out the circles of this print, not the larger circle, but the, the medium sized circle here, and then I just cut that out, and then I cut it in half. So I have all of this interest the, of the print. Of that print, I think that uh, that was a pretty print. I got with that with Jen, I got that with Jen at the Missouri Star Quilt Company uh, a couple years ago when we went. So I'm just going to cut this off to a quarter of an inch, right there. And again, you see it has the it has the the, um, the seams, but that's okay. So I I don't know what I'm going to be doing with this um, this piece of fabric here. I may even just incorporate that into another quilt. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do, but that's that because we have decided we're going to be putting the 
flying geese print on. Um, I'm going to be doing the white and then I have enough of these, this flying geese print that I'm going to be doing that. But now what I'm going to do, so now I have my four corners. So now what I'm going to do is I have my black and white fabric here, quite a lot of it. And I'm going to need, I'm going to need the length to put on the quilt around the, my, my, my quilt now that is on point, I'm going to be putting a border on. So as Ian said, Ian said, make it wider than you think you're going to need. So I'm actually going to, as it's come off the bolt, I'm just going to cut it, start it right there, and I'm going to rip it. Just going to rip the length right there. Again, a lot of people don't rip fabric, but I don't mind ripping fabric to get lengths. And then I'm going to start out. I have two the same exact length. I'm going to, I'm going to just cut this. I'm just going to um, rip it in two. Just going to fold that on there and then slice that and then rip that. Now I do know that that's including the, the selvage, but I will, I will make up for that. That will be at the end because my piece is not going to be this wide. You can always cut things down. You cannot add fabric. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, sometimes when you, when you rip something, um, it, it bruises the edge. But that's because I, I can cut this down. I'm not using this. I don't like to, I like to cut mostly with my rotary cutter. But to get a nice straight thing, I rip it. And then um, I will figure out, I'm going to iron that. And then I'm going to figure out um, how, how much I'm going to need around the side of my quilt. So, so I have just added on these borders, which you just saw me rip off the, off the length of the fabric. Now, if I was adding just if I was using just a, if I was making just a square quilt what you do is you add borders you just add borders all the way around but we're not making a square quilt we're turning our quilt on point I'm going to show you now Ian's going to come in how we're going to put this on point this is where it comes a little bit tricky to get our uh, borders proper so I've just put this on the floor here trying to uh, work out where we went, where I went wrong before. So if I'm standing, I'm trying to make this a square. You see that? And adding these triangles and coming down here. Um, I obviously just made these huge borders here. We're going to cut them off. Um, and as you can see, I'm just, I've just laid this on here. There's my flying geese and there's my corner up there. Well, Ian's trying to figure out how to make this here square. I probably will have to cut out that try that setting uh, that um, quarter Dresden plate and mount it on another piece of black fabric that's been squared up properly because we're going to be cutting this here, this white border uh, at about, I think at about we figured out, I'll cut it about four and a half, maybe five inches all the way around and then attach my next bit of flying geese. But as Ian said, yes? See this line going across, which is the tape measure, the edge of the tape measure, it's got to line up with the apex of this, uh, what do you call it at the corner? The, the plate. Okay. Which is, it's, that's where it went wrong the before. The quadrant. The quadrant. The quadrant plate. Well now I've lined it up, so that means that this has to go over that way a little bit. Right, but and this is then perfect on it's, this corner. It's more or less perfect on the corner. Well, almost. You'll have to add a bit of black. Right, here. right. I'm going to have to add some black, but it's it's making it square. But will this will this white end up being the four inches like up there? Yes, it will. Yes. So when so I can now cut my white border down to f say five inches, allowing for the quarter inch okay. for my flying geese. I can cut this down to five inches, which I will do with a rotary cutter and a ruler for the well, people. If I was you, I'd do four and a quarter. Four and because, a quarter. Because the, the sizes of these quadrants on the, co on the uh, corners, uh, it's going to make it easier for you. Okay. So I'll cut this white border down to four and a quarter, which is about up there. Yep. Then I'll attach 
my flying geese like yeah. I did yeah. and then we'll address the corners right yes okay okay but this is this is what it's going to be looking like which I really like I like that bit of white relief and then up the corners up there which we will figure out which was the problem to begin with but Ian will do that with a straight edge I mean yeah. or yeah yeah, I mean, yeah we'll, we'll get some nice straight timber wood white painted <laughs> this is so not how to make a quilt this is an engineering this project. is an engineering and I'm a surveyor. This is I'm surveying. I know. This is quilt. so not how to make a quilt. Most quilt patterns are like, cut your borders at 64 yeah. and a quarter. No, I'm going to get my dumpy level and <laughs> theodolite out. Old oh. surveying. Yeah. This is a surveying Absolutely. surveying job. This is, a, this is more of an art project than working on a quilt. Yeah, that's what it is. My 2020 art project. Creating Beautiful. calm it's in stunning. chaos. It's stunning though. Thank you. Working on this border here. I'm not bothered that I'm cutting off this bit because I have I have all of this lovely border that I've all of this lovely fabric that I have cut off and I will save that for another border for a quilt. Um, or sashing or something. So I'm not bothered that I did that. And as you can see, I'm all squared up on my on my ruler on my mat here. Um, and I, even though I just ripped this, my, my borders are lovely and square. What I'm doing now is I'm cutting off, I'm using my ruler. Um, I'm not going to give you guys a, more of a heart attack. I'm lining this up on my, on my ruler here and I'm cutting four and a half inches. And I'm using the edge of my flying geese, the black, with my rulers. You can see it's nice and straight, even though I just sort of chopped it off. Obviously, this is not the way to do borders. I, I'm joking about, but there's a reason why you cut borders the, within the within the inch, so you do not have the problem that I had. But it, as I as I'm saying, sort of lightheartedly, but it's true. This is more of like an an engineering trying to make some sort of sense out of something, and this is the way I'm doing it. I don't usually do it things like this. Um, you know, make a big border and then cut it down makes no sense. Quilt police are going to have a field day with me. But as you can see, my my quilt is nice and square now. And that's the whole point of it. Now I am at a corner again. This will be this will be this is the top corner. I'm going to add my triangles over here. But as Ian said, just let's for now, let's not let's not worry about this point now. Let's attach my flying geese to here and then we'll figure out the corners which are going to end up a bit smaller now that I've had the both the flying geese um hold on I'll put that there the, the flying geese are going to come here now and then my black and then my black um corner triangle then my black piece over here so well however it goes yeah so so that's how so that's somehow like that. That's how it's going to end up. Um, the corner is going to be over there somehow like that. Um, or no, it's going to be down here, whatever, however. Um, and all of this will be gone. So this is the top of my, this is the edge of my quilt. Anyway, however, I'm going to work that out. But for now, I'm just cutting my borders off. I love the flying geese here. And even though I messed up my flying geese going one way, I'm going to continue that I'm going to have the, my flying geese going the way they are on the quilt, um, on this bit of the quilt, when I go to attach these. I don't have quite enough of these, but remember I had cut, I had cut tw uh, 12 of these, and now I'm just going to have to attach uh, two lengths together, just to make, just to add a little bit. Um, but I can do that um, to, to, to make my strips a bit longer. So I'm just going to continue cutting this at four and a quarter inches all the way around. I've laid this out on the floor and just turn the edges in here. Um, Ian's going to now straighten it up. But again, as I was looking at this quilt, I put the flying geese on it, on that second thing, and here's my corners, and we're going to square these corners up. There's still too much black. I still see too much black because I see, I see lots of print, black, a little bit of black, print, print, little bit of black, print, print and then it should just be a little bit of black here okay so what I've done is to counteract that I've just cut obviously it's not sewed on I've cut a piece of this stripe here on this corner this stripe is in there Let's see if I can go slowly 
that stripe's in there next to that black the print next to that black the print and then it would be next to that black and the print and I think that stripe ties it all in after it's all been squared up really nice that was the whole point of it there's a little bit too much black and it's a little bit too stark so I brought the stripe and then we have one two three lots of this stripe once it's sewn on you'll just see the small stripe and then a little bit of black and then I also did that's just um laid on there I didn't even measure it uh, I I'm going to do um a a, a, a a black and white dot to finish this off because as I was saying I just did the black again too much black so I'll put the I'll put the white corner there and then most probably trim it with a little bit more black to make it really square but this is square this is square even just laying here even with um Ian, Ian had to pop out um I but I can tell just with me turning the corners around that this is going to be nice and square once he puts a straight edge on here but I'm going to add this border here this stripe um to to copy that what we've done is we have measured on one corner of the quilt and cut off the point where we've done, already done it up there this is going to be the top of a quilt when you put a point when you put a quilt on point you have to end it somehow you have to end it at the points somehow so this was a little bit scary but Ian measured Ian measured about an inch in here so you see a little bit of the white okay um of the dot and we've measured it we've we took the I'm trying to do this with one hand we took this we we cut this piece off here so now what I'm doing is I'm going to find my inch over here and I'm going to line up this was the piece we cut off I know that my borders are exactly the same size and my flying geese are exactly the same size and I know here on this angle because it's exactly the same size this is an inch here to where we did it on the other end so now lining up my borders here and here I'm just going to slice off this this corner this corner here well it's the corner but it's going to be the top again it's a little bit funky so lining lining up my lining up this piece here that is the, the exact I have three corners that I'm going to be cutting off so I'm going to be taking my ruler and I'm going to be cutting off right there so here's my here's my third one I'm cutting so again here's my two here's two corners and I have an inch here and my flying geese which are this is perfect here this is perfect here doesn't matter about this stuff here so I'm lining that up I have my inch here the same amount here and here and I'm just cutting this off because I know this is nice and square And there's that one. Now come around here. Uh, there, I've done that one. And I have one left to do. As you can see, my quilt is lovely and, and square here. Lovely and square. So I'm just gonna take this, just gonna take this. I've already turned that. <laughs> I take this and line it up an inch away line up my borders line up my borders there I'm an inch away there square it all up here to there and then all, all four corners or tops and sides are cut off exactly the same so then what I'm doing, going to do now is I have cut out my stripe, cut out my stripe that's going to, that's going to bring my stripe out here again. I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to, um, 
I can then just bring it up here, just sew it like that to copy over here. And then I can just again follow this line down and slice it off. And then here I just have to, we just have to put the um, corners, the corner pieces, which, which because we've made this a bigger, my corner pieces um, are, are, are taking up small, it, it has to be smaller. Because these were, these took up the whole, the corners took up the whole bit now, but because we've added one, two, three, four borders, um, that, that which was sort of too small is going to be fitting better. But again, I'll show you there. So right now, I'm just going to sew this on here, keeping this proud again, so then I can cut that off, because this is the top of our coat. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to bind this probably with black, so this top here is, is a, uh, you're, it's going to be dramatic. What I'm going to do now, because it's on the bias, I'm going to go, go over and I'm going to starch these really well. This is on the bias here. We've just cut across here. I'm going to just starch these corners really well before I start messing with them. Um, because, you know, they can get, uh, just even then, they just got a little bit wrinkled. So I'm just going to starch that really well and press that really well as the top of my quilt. Right now, just... I'm sewing my striped border onto my flying geese. It's a little bit tricky because I want to hide that quarter inch of this stripe of the print fabric and I want to hide this uh, white here from where I cut it uh, from the off of the material, off of the, the bolt. So I'm lining up this black stripe next to the black um, if I, if I, if I falter a little bit, it'll be okay. Again, I'm not pulling anything. It's right in front of me and I'm just stitching right alongside that black. Hopefully not, you're not going to see the stripe underneath. Keep my needle down and press her foot up and then I'll just check. And yeah, there, there is what I, I'm striving for. <laughs> so I just have this white line and you don't see, it's not wavy, and you don't see the um, print here. So this so. is the fabric that I'm cutting my stripes from. As you can see, um, it's a beautiful paisley print. This is what I've already done two of them. I've just attached one onto my quilt there, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to, it looks like I'm losing this paisley, but um, I will keep that. I will keep, um, I have one, two. I will keep this lovely stripe here because um, I can use that in another project. Absolutely, that's a beautiful stripe, uh, either a border print uh, that I could, I could put on some on either side. But I like, I like striped fabrics because it gives you a real option of what you're going to do. Maybe I just wanted to cut, maybe I just wanted this dot here. So again, you have to allow for your quarter inch seam allowance. But then, then you could have this whole piece here. So stripes give you an option. In this, in this case, I'm just going to be cutting two more. Of that, 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 uh, those three other stripes will be intact because I just need the length. So again, what I'm doing is I want this, I want the whole white sided stripe here. So I'm just going to cut quarter of an inch on either side to allow for my to allow for my um, seam allowance. So I'm just going to cut I'm just going to cut this quarter of an inch. Cutting black fabric is a little bit hard. <laughs> Such so pretty. There you go. So there's my third stripe. I will keep this. Fold that up, put it in my stash there. And then, whoops. And then do this one. I do love stripes. I do love border prints, I should say. 
they give you a real option this paisley could be used in a block too the one block wonders this print here so this I don't need this longest strip but again I will um I'll put the rest in my in my stash so I'm just going to attach this three more to the sides of my quilt I've attached my stripe to the sides of my quilt which will become the top of my quilt when I put my black corner pieces over here now what I've done is I'm going to just follow this straight line across I have my ruler I'm going to just follow that line which I know is perfectly straight and perfectly marked and the same size and I'll just follow that over to uh, and slice off because again this is the top of my quilt and the sides are going to be put on here my Dresden plate sides what I am going to do is I have starched this but as you can see it's on the bias what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a small tiny little stay stitch just a just a regular stitch just so that doesn't get too much more um, stretched out of shape by the time I'm using it um, time I'm messing about with it so I'm just going to stay stitch that right there so now I'm just going to continue cutting these four corn for the four top bits of my quilt making everything making sure everything is nice and straight like that that's nice and straight and I'll just these are the sides these are the edges that we're going to put my corners my black corners on I like it looks really pretty As you can see I've, I've, I've ironed that really nice uh, but I don't want it to get all wrinkled and all out of shape so I'll just stay stitch that like that on as you can see on point things <laughs> have to sort of I, I, I said it before they have to sort of end somewhere and it's like ah and you end up this is where math really comes into it because if you do anything on with, with a with um on point with a proper doing it properly this obviously isn't the proper way to do it um i'm making you know a silk purse out of sal's ear here um it, there is math involved it's the, the the size of setting triangles or or templates or whatever you do uh, whatever whatever is available so now what i am going to do is i'm going to um I'm going to I think I'm going to end this quilt I'm, I'm going to end this here um, because I want to I want to spend some time hopefully getting my corners properly and zigzagging or um, blanket stitching my white corner pieces into my Dresden plate so I'm going to end my project here this is part three.